and I thought I'd make a joke. She was walking up, and I go, she goes, how's it going? I go, Every, I go, everything's fine, but that bathroom, woo! And she goes, well, then clean it up. <laughs> so that backfired. I didn't clean it up. Which sounds like <laughs> Louis Anderson, God rest his soul. He guys ready to play the feud. <laughs> <laughs> Top five ants in the bar. We serve a times and mind your times. Show me water. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so excited. My co host. He is the host of Mental Reps Podcast and also the producer of the Shamrock Comedy Club in Fort Lauderdale. It's Brian Wright. What's up, Brian? What's up, Heather? How are you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm really pumped to be here. Yay. Well, I know you have the opportunity to pick the brains of a lot of comedians. And so thank you for joining me tonight. Anytime. Again, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, We got a great guest today. I, I couldn't agree more. And he actually has a show tonight. So we're so thankful that he's joining us for the short bit of time that we have. So ladies and gentlemen, let's bring to the stream at this time, the one and only Jeff Richards. <laughs> <laughs> Wowzies. Thank you very much. Hi, Jeff. This is What's so exciting. Up? What's happening, kid? Oh, man. Brian? Yeah. Uh, so you're in you're in Nebraska. Is that where you are tonight? Yeah, I'm here. I uh, yeah, I have a uh, I have a small cattle. I, I you know I raise cattle on my own, and uh, <laughs> it, it, it's laborious, and uh, so I have to come out here every now and check on the cows, and uh, that's not true. So oh, because our first <laughs> no. question was actually if you had any tips on how to milk a cow. I guess we'll skip over that one. No, uh, I'll answer that. I'll answer that. Um, Mm -hmm. You got to grip, you know, just right. And it takes a while to figure out what that is. Um, It's all about the utter grip. It is. And you got to make sure you you trim your fingernails, too, because they uh, (laughs) they don't like that. They don't like fingernails. That's a good way to get a hoof in the back of the head or whatever. (laughs) Right. Whatever it's called. Is it a hoof? I don't even know. I think, question. I think it's a hoof. I think it's a hoof. We can we can confirm that. But uh, so we, we kind of wanted to know about you're originally from San Francisco. Is that correct? Yeah. The Bay Area. Yeah. The Bay Area. So was there like a, a comedy scene in the Bay Area? What what was it like growing up in the Bay Area? There was a comedy club in my hometown, Walnut Creek, uh, but it was shut down before uh before I was even interested in comedy, it was, um, but no, I didn't really do any comedy up there. Just, I did a public access show, um, on the local, uh, TV, uh, just messing around and doing that. But, uh, I went to school in North Carolina and that's when I started out there. Yeah. North Carolina. And yeah. what, what, what did you, what did you, uh, was that high school, college? What was that for? College. Yeah. And what, what did you major in? Anything exciting? Uh, communications, yeah. Just playing it real easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good field. It's yeah. a good field. Uh-huh. Yeah, that public access show you had, was it uh, Hanson Live? And uh, how did that get started? Did you start developing characters on that or, or what? Yeah, I, I, um, I basically just, you know, I wanted. I said I want to do some crazy comedy show, and they're like, "Well, it's really supposed to be about you know the, you know the 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 city and the people in the city." So I said, "Yeah, that's what I mean. You know, yeah, that's what I want to do." And then I just had like teachers on and like a librarian, and but then I would <laughs> make up other stuff and and just uh, you know just I like to do like an interview where you didn't know if that person was actually who they were. I was doing that, so I'd have a real person and then someone where. Is this real? Is this a, you know, just kind of like that. Because I was a huge Howard Stern fan. I still am. Um, And uh, I like that. Like, you didn't know what was real sometimes, you know. Interesting. Okay. So, so did you have the opportunity when you were hosting that? Did you do impressions on that show? Or was that something you kind of started after? I think I I was always kind of doing them, you know, since I was little, you know, imitating friends and teachers and adults and stuff. But not really on there. Uh, on on the public, I was kind of, I was just, I was, I was watching a lot of Stern. I remember, remember Stern was on E. This is probably you, you guys are too young, but he, hey, now we, we he remember. On, yeah, we remember. he was on E, and I just loved that show. So I was kind of emulating him and David Letterman. Nice to see. You. Good to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, you would hope at some point, and again, I don't know when, I don't know how. <laughs> 
Uh, so I was just doing those guys and just messing around. I just, I just, it was fun, you know. Who were who were some of the impressionists that you looked up to growing up? And do you remember what the first impression was that you tried to do? I think it was my first one I ever did, I think, was my uncle. I was making fun of my uncle when I was like just a toddler. Um, Prime candidate. You, you're, just, you're just nailing him. How you doing, man? <laughs> All right. Right on. I'd do that, make fun of them. And, um, but the early impressionists were Billy West from Howard Stern and Dana Carvey and Daryl Hammond and um, oh, wow. those guys mainly. Yeah. Very so cool. I was going to say that has to be probably surreal because I'm sure a lot of these these people you're, you're friends with now, you work with. Is, is that a little bizarre, like emulating them and now them being like in your same circle? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know that they're in my same circle so much, but I mean, Daryl, I ended up working with on Saturday Night Live, and I ended up meeting Billy West uh, through his uh, brother, who would go to the same Starbucks, he, and he, he told me who his brother was, and I almost just flipped out, and uh, and I got to hang out with him once, and uh, but yeah, yeah, I. I I always, I don't know. I just love doing impressions. I didn't know it was going to lead to anything, but uh, it's just fun. And now with my my podcast, you know, the Deep Fake podcast, like it's a good chance to be able to do that. Yeah. How, how does how does that even work? Because I, I watch it and I'm like. I, I'm so confused by the idea of a deep fake. So is it something when you're recording with your guests, are you already like, do you already have the deep fake or is that something that is done after the fact? What, yeah, it's what's done, the process? Okay. just done after the fact. Um, and, you know, I just tell them it's just my face. You're just going to see my face. And, you know, for a while I was during allergy season, my nose would run. <laughs> but like if I was to put my hand in front of my face, it would screw up the deep fake later you know and it so i couldn't put my hand so it just run my nose would run and it was just wild and and i remember i was doing gary Busey once and my <laughs> guest was like my guest was esther Koo, and she was like she's oh, like she's like you have a booger you have a booger <laughs> i'm like i do where really and she was like yeah you have a booger <laughs> that sounds like but it. like when you see the deep fake you can't tell so so that's uh, so half of those i'm i got snot running down my face but you'd never know i got i gotta say your bill o'reilly was just so spot on and still is who are some of your uh favorite characters to do and you know as far as developing them what are your means of developing them because i know some people they'll take this person's voice and another person's voice cross them over and that's kind of how they find the person that they're trying to impress what's your process like and who are some of the harder ones that you had to work extra hard to hone in on well i'm still trying to crack that joe rogan in code trying to get him down <laughs> but that's there's just one. something there's so many layers to him i just don't it's know it's the to ivermectin do it. i think that's the layer yeah. so ivermectin it's a horse uh horse uh dewormer yeah. yeah but there's um elk meat yeah <laughs> I just try to listen to it for a while and not try to make a move on it. Try to, try to, you know, try to, you know, just really take my time ha absorbing it. And, and then if it just grows on me, I can do it. But, you know, usually it's, I either can do it or not do it. And I, I know that pretty soon. I feel like I can't do the Joe Rogan, but I don't want to let it go because he's so huge and would be a great one to do. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I just listen to his show all the time now. <laughs> Just keep eating elk meat, man. Just yeah. keep it up. All right, dude. Come here, dude. All right, all right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, out okay. of curiosity, because obviously, like, not everyone has the ability that you have to just hear something and be able to emulate it. Are you also musical, Jeff? Like, can you can you hear a song and be able to like sing it, or is it kind of a separate thing? Yeah, I do a character called Ditto Kiddo. Um, and it's all like EDM with music. It's like Pet Shop Boys kind of thing. And so I like to do that. I like to emulate styles and come up with lyrics and um, and um, and all that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I forgot what your question was. But yeah, I do love love 
I love <laughs> some of the music I can do too, like you know, like Tom Petty a little bit, you know. Don't do it like that. Don't do it like that. <laughs> a little oh yeah, a little like with G Tom like the lamb like no whole tongue. <laughs> you know. R.I.P. R.I.P. Tom. I know. I never got to I see like Tom that. live, but I feel like I just live vicariously through this moment. So thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> I like that. Um, if you don't mind, Heather, I was going to ask him, because um, I know that early on in your career, you started at the, the comedy store, right? Yeah. So what was it like to work at the Mecca of comedy and how much interaction, if any, did you have with the infamous Mitzi Shore? Uh, yeah, she was... She was there when I got there. It was ninety eight, um, and she she uh, picked me to be a door guy. And uh, once I was a door guy, I wasn't a paid regular. I was a door guy. I had like the you know I had the the back back door uh, shift, which was like kind of like the least fun shift. And I thought I'd make a joke. She was walking up, and I go, she goes, "How's it going?" I go, Every, "I go, everything's fine, but that bathroom, woo." And she goes, well, then clean it up. <laughs> so that backfired. Well, then clean it up. Which sounds like <laughs> Louis Anderson, God rest his soul. He guys ready to play the feud? <laughs> <laughs> Top five ants in the bar. We serve a time to mind your time. To show me water. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Oh, I love it. I was going to say, we, we also really appreciated um, your tribute to Bob Saget. Uh, he's amazing as was louis so um yeah th th thank you for you know oh, doing yeah. that sure and yeah, bob Saget's amazing uh, this is the nicest guy it's like the biggest guys you, you would think would be the hardest to get but sometimes they're just the easiest to get and they're just mm. so nice and yeah when do you want to do it let's do it you know that was He's the same the with generosity of spirit was there for sure yeah for sure definitely <sighs> well uh going back to the comedy store uh what would what would you say, whether it was an act or a person or someone passing through, what was the craziest thing that you came across at the comedy store? Craziest thing. Um, I mean, Quentin, Quentin Tarantino went, came in one time. I got to perform for him. That was pretty cool. <laughs> that was cool. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, but there was just, you know, it used to be just much more like, you know, now that it's, it's kind of locked down and it's it's more security there and 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 it's more you know a little more corporate than it was when i was there in 98 it was sort of dead it was sort of dead so you know just crazy stuff would happen you know it's a lot of things you can't even talk about on this show but <laughs> but it was just much more of the wild west but then when it started getting popular again then it kind of got serious and so i feel like there was a lot of you know, it was it was it was great because the crowds were smaller, so you could be you could experiment more, and you could you could just just you know improv more. I think I, that's how I felt. You know, as opposed to a full room, which you feel like you know you got to get give them the stuff. You know, yeah. yeah. So I, I loved it though. I was door guy there, and it was a lot of fun. And what what was Quentin Tarantino like as an audience member? Was he respectful? Yeah, he did good. I I, I, I it, it, he did good. He was a great. <laughs> uh, I don't know. He was good. I had a good set. Uh, they everybody said he, they like he liked me, so I I felt good about that. And I was trying to squeeze in a bunch of impressions I thought he would like. Yeah, you know? I, I was I was gonna say I bet Quentin that has to be a really difficult impression. Uh yeah, it just not one that grew on me. Uh, okay, right. Okay, you know, uh, I don't know how he. Uh, I, I did. Yeah, it's not an easy one. It's like Martin Scorsese too is another one that's like, you just have to get into it. I, I don't. I don't know how to do the, that one either. <laughs> yeah. So, Jeff, when when you when you close your eyes, like, what's the most like natural and easiest impression like for you to just like, boom, you're there. I think it's like. Maybe, uh, maybe like Dustin Hoffman, you know, <laughs> there was a long hallway. She didn't know where I was <laughs> Try to open the different doors and you open the first door and it won't, won't open. The first door won't open. So you go to the second door and the second door won't open. Just forget it. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> that is so good. Not a lot of people, if any, do Dustin Hoffman. So, I mean, if you oh. can really hone in on somebody, no, nobody's ever nailed like that, like you have. I mean, that's that's impressive, man. Nice. Never seen anybody do a Hoffman like that. I, Thank I think, you. I think that the craziest thing, though, Jeff, is like you look like them. Like when you're doing the characters, like even obviously the deep fakes out a whole nother level, but like your face morphs into Dustin Hoffman. Like, that's yeah, I, I have that. I look, 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 look a little like him. Yeah, I do have resemble same, same head, I think. <laughs> have we ever done the genealogy? Like, we need both of you guys to what, what do you do? You have to spit in a glass and then paternity we'll test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> do, we need to get some uh, DNA going here. Swirl Dustin is the father. <laughs> yeah. I'm not the father. You're the father. <laughs> You'll talk to me like that. I don't want to talk to you like that. I also like doing fa Jimmy Fallon's a fun one to do. He's kind of a fun one to make fun of, you know. That's the yeah. coolest thing. Ah, oh, come on, man. That's so cool, you know. That's like the coolest thing in the world, you know. That's like that's like cooler than that's like twice as cool as cool, you know. <laughs> you, you know what? You know what I like to do. You know, I like having fun. You know, I like having fun. I think having fun is cool. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. uh, that's well, speaking of Jimmy, okay, let's take it back a little bit further. Well, you were the first person to be on both SNL and Mad TV, which was a huge accomplishment. I believe the only other one was Taryn Killam, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, first off, do you have an impression of Lauren Michaels? It seems like everybody does, but do you have a Lauren? Well, it's funny because my therapist sounds like Lauren. <laughs> so it's a real catch. It's a real, it's a real, you know, says, so, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, is, so how are you doing? How are you feeling? Are you doing good? Yeah. 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 So, uh, cause then my therapist always asks me like, like half a second at how I'm doing. And then he just launches into just, just chatting. I don't know if you have that, you know, he's always like, so, um, how are you doing? You feel good? Yeah. Yeah. So have you seen succession yet? <laughs> There's a lot of strong male characters. Yeah. <laughs> what are you putting in your shakes these days? <laughs> oh, you put nuts and spinach. Okay, oh my I God. love it. So, well, do, do you have do you have to go to a therapist for each of your characters, or is it that's just funny? Yeah, Jeff? yeah, I do, oh. I do, I do. <laughs> I was gonna see if you needed to go on after being on SNL because I know that that experience is different for a lot of people. I mean, some go on there and they earn the respect quickly. They get along with Lauren. Or others go on there and they're just living 100% in fear. They think nobody likes them. Everybody's gone to Harvard and I don't know. I don't fit in. What was it like for you? It was, uh, it was, uh, you know, I was 25. So I was young. I'd been doing stand up like two years. So I didn't really have the, you know, the, I wasn't used to like navigating in that situation as much. But I liked it and I got put in things because of, you know, doing impressions. So they'd, throw you in a sketch that was already written to do so i got to do a good amount of things um but i just looked at like listen i i, I could have never even gotten the show you know i could have just auditioned and and never gotten it so any amount of time is is very lucky you know oh absolutely. So very grateful absolutely yeah, yeah. do do you remember the the casting process i know i've seen quite a, a few like casting videos for for members do, do you remember your audition process yeah it was uh it was you know i had to do five minutes of i just did like nine impressions and you know it was on the stage of the snl stage and it was you know a few people in the audience few like you know higher ups and I just ran through the impressions, got up, and then I walked off stage. And then Lauren stopped me and said, "Good job." And I was like, "Okay, that's cool." You know, mm. that that felt pretty cool. So I just remember thinking, I just didn't want to screw the audition up. You know what I mean? That's how I was. I was happy that I didn't screw the audition up. So, yeah, it's Very a nice. lot. It's a lot of stress because it's like your dream. You know, it's your dream to go on there. So. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. The wow. process that week has got, they say that that is the most uh, stressful and often like pleasurable week of many of these entertainers' lives. I, I imagine it's different for being a writer or a cast member, but when people go on there to host, I mean, they, they talk about how stressful the week is and they have a massive amount of respect for you guys and what you do, like the Tuesdays, writing until three, four in the morning and the insane week. I mean, 
Have you encountered any other show or production uh, that you've been on that has come even close to that level of production? No, 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 definitely not. Um, I think the hardest part is that they always tell you, know the material, but don't be completely locked into it because between dress and air, they'll cut lines, they'll cut chunks. So be, stay loose with it a little, which is crazy. And then the other part was the, the cards, the cue cards. Was, I have a little bit of a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, dyslexia, a little bit of that. So, so that's, that's kind of a weird thing. So you, I was always trying to figure out how much should I know this, but the best, the best uh, sketches were always like on the update. You know, when you do the updates, because it's just straight to one, one set of cards. Yeah. So I think stand-ups always do better on update too anyway, because there's, it's not, there's no real blocking to it. Fair. And, and since Brian mentioned Drunk Girl, of course, the icon that is Drunk Girl, <laughs> uh, when did you first pitch that idea that you wanted to uh, use her on SNL? It's like um, pretty early in, um, in the, uh, my first year. And I remember they were like, um, no, let's do it where you're talking about your experience with a drunk girl. And I, I was like, I really want to do just as a character. And then Tina Fey was the one that helped me get that going. And uh, they put me in drag because they wanted to make sure I didn't look like a guy playing a woman. They make sure that I look. And, you know, the my cat feet, suit, man, the cat suit. Yeah, the cat suit. Well, that was, you know, I was a little overweight for that one. That was. No, it made it better. It did. Thank you. That's very creepy for you to say that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I was oozing out of that cat suit and uh, they had to get extra cat suit. They had to get, get more cat suit on them. And, uh, and I fell, I, I fell, I wasn't supposed to fall, but I just thought it'd be f better or funnier if I just fell. I was wondering about that. I heard the thunk. I was yeah. like, they didn't have a pad back there. Yeah. The cat that. suits that didn't have a thunk. pad or yeah. What is, what, what would you say is like one of the main things as far as, coming across as being completely intoxicated because that's a tough thing to do most of the time it just looks wonky but you pulled it off it was really <laughs> impressive yeah i mean i i came up with the character before i got there and it was based on an audience member who wouldn't shut up this girl in the audience so i just started impersonating her to her and that was the take <laughs> i had was that specific uh, girl in the audience <laughs> Did, did you ever hear from her again? Because she has to feel pretty flattered. I don't know if she ever put it together or if she's was still alive. I I assume she lived after that <laughs> night. But she was pretty Maybe. wasted. <laughs> I hate you. Shut up. <laughs> Junior. Junior. You're an owl. No. By the way. By the way, I gotta say, I, I have seen some other comedians uh take from that character of yours. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say steal, but I've seen inspired. some other were, comedians. Yeah. Let's yeah. Inspired, they were inspired uh, by that character. By very much. So yes. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, uh, I Are don't you know. flattered. Uh, I don't know what I am. I, I, I think it's like, everyone's going to borrow from everybody, but, um, you know, I just, uh, I did what I did with it. And, that's all I need to do. You know, I can't worry about uh, anybody else. I, I know what you're saying and I know who you're saying, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but it's all, but it is different because it's, you know, it's uh, nothing is exact. You know, I mean, if you did lines that I was doing, I'd have been more, but, but it's like, I got to do it on SNL. So, yeah. So it predates whatever. So it doesn't really matter. I like that. Fair enough. Okay, Jeff. So we have a game we're going to play. This All right. is a game of would you rather. There is no wrong answers. Whatever you pick is correct. And if you want to tell us why you picked it, that's great. And if not, that's fine too. So we're going to bring up the graphic. And the first would you rather is, would you rather have to eat a ghost pepper before performing? Or would you rather have to drink five glasses of milk before a performance? Well, that I do drink five glasses of milk before performances. <laughs> What? No, I love I love milk. <laughs> so milk, I would say milk for sure. 
from those cattle we were talking about earlier, I can only assume. Okay. But the funny thing is, is the, the, if you drink the ghost pepper and then you drink the milk, that's how you would, you know, that's how you put out uh, spicy Uh, milk. Right. Right. So it's almost like a, it's a real, it's almost like a psych out. (laughs) <laughs> I like I those look like- more like strawberries from this from this I, i'm on my <laughs> phone but <laughs> yeah it, it's very possible all right brian you want to read the next one okay uh tour with the first comedian you saw live or first comedian special you saw first comedian special was was eddie murphy right there that's that's what made me want to do stand-up it was definitely that's that special delirious yes Ooh. I mean, the leather, the suit, oh, the whole the thing. Leather. I mean, come on. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Love it. Did they done saltines? <laughs> <laughs> well, right. maybe that was, yeah, wrong. <laughs> Would you rather? Do, 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 do. Okay. Survive on a stranded island, <laughs> stranded island with Gary Busey or be on an island with Jimmy Fallon. Now, this is, I, I don't know. Well, I, I, I mean, are there... If there are no other women on the island, I'd be with Jimmy Fallon. Okay. <laughs> does that make any sense? It does. Does it have to? It I don't does, know. It does. But Gary Busey would be really fun to hang out with Gary Busey, though, too. Talk about the universe. <laughs> oh, I'm Gary Busey. I wrote a book called Buseyisms. For example, book, B-O-O-K, Blast Ostrich Over Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I, I, no, I do we, like Jimmy. I like to give him a little shit, but uh, you know, it's he's he's very ripe for being made fun of. You know, who, who do you think would be like the better survivalist? Like, who would go into the ocean, pick up a fish, you know, cook it? Where I, I don't know between these two. That's a tough one, right? Um, uh, yeah, no, that's a tough one. I, I, I don't, I, I, but I would say Gary because Gary okay. looks like he's he could clonk something on the head if he needed to, you know. And he could use a friend as well. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Brian, you want to read the next one? Okay. Would you rather play to a room full of second graders or play to a room full of 85-year-old cougars? Is this also on the island? <laughs> uh, there is a very nice comedy club on the island, but this could be wherever. No, I that's mean, Epstein's I Island. Like, that's a different one. I think... Ooh. If if you're doing music, it'd be more fun with the kids, but then with the the cougars, probably they're gonna get a lot of the older impressions. So like, could probably say the cougars. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I like cougars that. Cougars is a good choice. Good choice. Mm-hmm. Okay, Jeff, would you rather listen to Weird Al Yankovic on repeat for 24 hours, or listen to Doctor Demento for 24 hours on repeat? Doctor Demento, just because you get more variety, I think. Okay. I like that. Like- I'm excited for the Weird Al biopic, though. Just putting it out there. Oh, I love it. I love that. Weird Al. He's amazing. But uh, yeah, there's so many great stuff. So, you know, like they, um, uh, they might be giants. I love they might be giants. They, he used to play them a lot. Awesome. Hey, it's love the right it. answer. It's your choice. All right, yeah. we got we got two more. Okay. 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 Would you rather do a Freaky Friday swap with Fred Durst or Doctor Phil? Oh, Fred! I know Fred a little bit, so and, and I'm just name I'm just name dropping that because his name's right there. Uh, I'd say Fred, yeah, Fred. Uh, Doctor Phil, you know, he puts on whatever he puts on. Uh, uh, if if you want to change your life, you gotta. Hey, look, look. hey, how you doing, man? <laughs> it's not very in, 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 uh, genuine, is it? When he goes, uh, how you doing, man? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Condescending. I no. hope you're doing well. You look <laughs> like you're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Fr- Fred Durst, I think it's a great choice. I love this new thing he's got going on. So I think I think it's a good choice. All right. Yeah. And our final one, it's a, it's a little strange one, but would would you rather be a reverse merman or a reverse centaur? <laughs> what? <laughs> a reverse merman what's a so, reverse merman so instead of your bottom half being a fish it's the top half so your top half is fish your bottom half is man same for the centaur your top half is a horse the bottom half is is human and you're asking me which one i'd rather be uh-huh oh i don't know i guess the fish one <laughs> can you swim 
I guess. Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The fish. Fish. I'll go fish. with the fish. Okay. It's a good, it's a good choice. Great Land choice. and sea. I like it. <laughs> well, yeah. Jeff, this has been so much fun. Um, yes. bef- before we release you back into the wild of Nebraska, is there uh, any final thoughts you want to leave us with here today? No, just check out check out my stuff if you want. If you like uh, impressions, uh, my Instagram is the Jeff Richards, and there's all the stuff there. And the Jeff Richards, and yeah, just check it out. And and uh, thank you very much. Yes, you're an absolute delight. We'll have to do this again sometime when you're okay. uh, not on the road. Uh, before we do let you go, we're going to go over our upcoming guests that we have coming up for March, April. I think we got some going on in May. So next week we have voice actor Chris T. Next Thursday we have Phil Moore from Nick Arcade. The following Tuesday we have John Schneider from Smallville, Dukes of Hazard. We also have musician Gary Puckett. We have Dee Wallace, Casey Jost. We have David Cook. I, we have John Kassir coming up, Jason Marsden. We are so excited. So please keep tuning in. Brian, thank you for being my co-host this evening. Oh, it was a pleasure. Thank you for having me anytime. Awesome. And Jeff, thank you so much again. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Take care. Nice to meet you, man. Have a great show. All right. See you guys next week. Bye, everybody.